Hi, I'm Brandon, and today we're going to be installing a new storm door here. So this storm door is the Anderson's 300 series, three-quarter light. And to install this, we need a 3 30 seconds and a 5 16 bit. And we're going to need a screw gun and a drill. And we're going to get this thing opened up here. I like to put these on top of a couple saw horses. And you gotta be careful you don't cut the actual door in there. There is cut lines right here. So I'm gonna follow those. And my blade is pretty dull. I've been cutting sheetrock with it. Okay, there we go. Cut that thing. I think I need that. Okay. This thing actually fell over. Somebody had it leaned up the long way against the wall, and the wind caught it. And glue it over. I think it was okay though because it was in the box. So the nicer ones of these actually have a uh, little extension that you pop on right here. And what that does is when you put your side piece on here and say so you have to move it up a little bit in order to catch this top with a screw. What that does is it actually fills this gap at the bottom right here. So you don't see daylight coming out that way. I'm not sure if this one has that or not. But we'll set these aside for now. These right here are filler strips. And ooh, that's behind the screen. Let's see, we can take this out if we want to, or we can just slide this right up. This should be all our hardware, I believe. Oh, there's some more there. So this should be for the closer, and this should be everything to mount the door. That's all the um, that's for the handle, that's for the handle, that is the handle, and then this is also the handle. So no, we don't have anything for mounting the door in there. Gonna take a peek underneath this thing if I can get it to move. Okay. There's the installation instructions. We 
can take a look at those. See, we have a rain cap, side rails, and then there's a top little rain deflector, K. Where's K? Yep, rain cap extender. That's if the top doesn't hit up there. And they're just showing us all the tools we need. And we'll toss those aside for now. All our screws and everything must be in here. There we go. So there's our closer installation instructions telling us what we have. And we'll set those aside for now too. That's that's part of the closer. This is what we need right here to mount the door, to mount the side rails. These screws here too. Both of those are for mounting the side rails. So those were in with the closer. And there we go. Oops. With those. So usually on the face is where you're going to have your painted screws and then in the jams where you're not going to see them that's usually where you'll have your bright screws and they even gave us a drill bit here to pre-drill some of those holes. So the first thing we're going to do, whoops, I'm going to keep these in my bags, is look at the instructions that we threw and just make sure we're using the right screws. So they have a left-handed and a right-handed install and they're telling you, I'm, I'm going about this a little bit. Um, willy-nilly here. Sorry guys. I just lost that screw bit in my nail bags. Okay, so the first thing we want to check out is just make sure that you have the right size door for your opening. And right here we have a 36 by 80 door. And you can see it's 35 and a quarter. And the height of the door is 80 and 5 eighths about. The door itself is 36 by 80. And then obviously when you come in with your trims, it changes the dimension slightly. Uh, so it's telling us that in order to determine if the rail hin the hinge rail shim is needed, it says the shim needed the shim is needed if the opening width is 36 and an eighth to 36 and three eighths. So that's on this outside trim where we're where we're mounting that door, and we have 36 and a sixteenth, so we're okay there. And it's saying the nominal storm door size is 36 by 80, 36 by 78. So we're good, we don't need that shim. Uh, that's just the pad that rail in the shim right here that I was talking about earlier. That pads that rail in against right there and that would be on the hinge side, but it would go right inside of here. And you'd be able to put that right against it. Um, typically, even if they say you need it, I don't use it because in a perfect world, those work, but you're counting on 
whoever installed this door to have it level and plumb. And that's seldom the case. So the, the shim isn't even contacting the back of this often, so I don't bother with it. And like I said, that would actually be on this, this hinge side. And the next thing we're looking at is whether or not you have enough clearance for your for your latch. And if you have two by four walls, the the handle might run into this one. So you're gonna to want to set it up a little bit or down a little bit so it doesn't contact that like there. Uh, they're saying I need, they're saying that from the outside, it comes in two and a half inches. And right here, I have three and a half inches, so I got plenty of clearance. So I'm going to stick with the same height for the handle. So now we know that. And I've seen people use levels on the door jam and set this thing plumb. And in my opinion, that's not a very good idea because if this door is working and the whole thing's angled this way, you wanna keep the storm door angled with it, which is not great, but that's kind of the way that you gotta do things sometimes. Okay, so we want actually, I like my latch side to be over here with the other handle. So I'm gonna put the hinge on the right side. And um, the reason why is because, you know, if I'm gonna open up the door from over here, you gotta open it all the way in order to reach and grab that doorknob. And I don't like that, so I'm gonna come in this way and then I can get that doorknob right away. Uh, some people will maybe put it the other way if you have a different situation where the stairs are coming up a certain way but that's the way I like to do it. Right here we have the sweep part of the door. I'm going to take this off for now. Actually wait, oh, I'm going to leave that on. You can see they got it on the wrong side of that trim there. Ah, there we go. And we'll put it all the way up for now. And now I have to orient myself. This is the inside of the door right here. You can see it has the operating part and that's going to be operated from the inside. So we know this is the inside. And this door is going to come up just like that. So the hinge needs to be over here in order to contact right there. So we know we want to mount this just like this. The fuzzy side needs to be against the inside of that door. So we can actually uh, let's see. So we're going to pre-drill these holes in this edge of the door here. And I believe it says to mount this about 3/16 above the top of the door, but I'm going to double check that right now. Position the rail hinge, top of the rail hinge should extend approximately 3 sixteenths beyond the top of the door. So that was right.
And then once we do that, then we just need to hang the door. Those little plastic things are supposed to help us position the door. I don't usually bother with them. Okay. I think that's the last time. Oh, that was our famous last words. Okay. Got our screw guns. Come on. And I have my screw bit in there. And now these holes can actually help us position this rail hinge because it goes in the same hole sometimes. And <laughs> kind of the cheater move right here. Oh, I might have done this too many times. There we go. Because that, this thing hits right there and that screw would mess it up. That one's out of the way. And I believe this one also contacts. Doesn't always work out that that screw goes in that hole. Okay. So now we're aiming for 3 16 above. And we're gonna take a look at that hinge right here and see if this hits. No, it doesn't. It's actually in the wrong spot. So we gotta drill all those holes. It's about three sixteenths right there. I think they made this drill bit out of straight lead or something. Okay, there we go. And I <laughs> see famous last words. I don't even know if I'm gonna post this video, guys. Because I keep going back to things and all that. I just want to make sure I'm using the right screws. We're supposed to use one inch unpainted screws. That's what I thought. I'll put those in my nail bags now so I don't keep having to go get them. How many we got? We have eight. Okay. don't want to over tighten that screw and there is a little bit of slop in that hole and it looks like our reel moved down a little bit so I'm gonna loosen that and then I'm gonna drill this next hole closer to the other side That way it'll actually pull the, the rail up a little. There we 
go. We ended up with more like an eighth inch, but that's all right. It's going to work out just fine. That's why it says approximately three sixteenths. Just centering that. Thing in there. Okay, last screw. And one thing I I don't know if I mentioned, but you want to make sure that you don't want to over tighten those screws. You want to get them so they're tight and then go a couple more little turns. Not, not a full turn, but like a quarter turn maybe. Because it's composite inside there and it'll strip those screws out. Now we have the... rail mounted now we can actually hang the door and these things can help as like a little spacer i'm not sure sometimes it's just more stuff you know so we'll get our screw gun ready to go i have the screws already in my nail bags and now it's time to mount this. Whoop, should have locked that in place first. Okay, so now what I'm trying to do is set the top at a reasonable distance from that top trim. And you can see how the side rail kind of needs to mount. And then you want to leave room over there too, about a quarter inch, a little more. All the way tight is right there, but we can't do that because that'll put too much room on this left side. So we want to split the difference. It looks like about a half an inch. So we're going to do that. And I just have my toe under this thing right now. It's got to go up quite a ways. We'll see if setting the bottom on there helps at all. No, nope. so I need to either hold it up with my foot or I need to shim this thing up. Um, we'll probably just move it up with my foot. It's always kind of a pain. Uh, they tell you to pre-drill these holes into the wood because they're worried that you're going to crack the wood. It hasn't been happening, so I don't do it. Okay, I just got to find the right spot on my foot. And... There we go. I think that should be pretty close. might be down a little further than I want. Right now I'm just holding that bottom in so it doesn't kick out. Uh, the top, that looks like a good gap right there. And obviously the bottom still needs to move over. I'm gonna set another screw and that'll kick it over. And all I'm doing now is maintaining the same gap on the trim. You can see that line right there on the trim going up and it gets wider at the top because I set that away. And I'm gonna make that the same down at the bottom here. So I'm just pulling this over 
and it looks like it's about right there is where I want it to be. Try not to try not to jam the door. Could really mess up this. Oh, that thing's filled with paint. Okay. That should help right there. Okay. That's looking pretty close. I think I need to kick the bottom over a little more. Yeah, you can see actually the inside reveal that I need to come over about an eighth inch more. So I'll make a little mark here and make sure I pull it over more than that. Right there. Oof. Shaking. That did that should do. It's a little bit uneven of a gap still. I think that'll be all right though. We're only a sixteenth off about. Now we can check how the other rails go on. And to do that, I'll need a ladder. Okay, so I have the side mounted and now I got the top. This is a little rain deflector piece that I probably won't use. And you kind of have to slide this in from the side or kind of, you know, sort of like that. And this should, oh boy, this thing did get a little bit messed up when it fell. It's actually just that trim piece. And it's on the wrong side inside there. It fell and it caught on my car tire so it did like mess it up a little okay this piece could be replaced or maybe screwed down through the top and that might help it out a little now this one sits on top of the other one and it goes right down to it and it's supposed to go flush right there. And we want to keep an even gap all the way around. And it is easier if you pre-drill this because it's not going to get pulled around. The screw won't get pulled around by the grains. Come on. There we are. And now we're gonna aim to keep that same reveal right across the top here. We'll have to kind of ignore that middle because this top of the door is a little messed up. We wanna keep that the same as over here. That's looking good right there. And where we put that point of the screw has to be right in the center of that hole. And you probably saw it fell down there. 
once the screw goes in, it'll pull it back up. Okay. Yep, I'm liking it. And now I can either eyeball the top of this or I can get a level and make sure that the middle is not flexed up or down. Right now it looks like it's flexed down, but I think that's actually the trim on top of this door that's giving that illusion. Um, I can pull it up a little just to kind of take, make more of a happy medium. And again, wherever I put the point of that screw is where generally it's going to go. It could wander up or down a little from the wood grains. Okay, so now we have that one. And it's the same process for the side one. We're just going to match that reveal all the way down. So I'm going to turn this off for now. Okay, they said I had eight unpainted screws in the bag, but they said in the yellow bag, that's that. I had eight unpainted, but I didn't. So I gotta use painted ones for screwing into here. And you do this on the hinge side to give the hinge a little bit more support. And you gotta be careful not to over tighten these because you'll twist this thing in. So you wanna go snug. And that's where that shim could come in handy. So it doesn't twist in. twist it in a little bit and it'll be okay and this is probably a good idea to do before you actually mount the other side rail that way if it changes changes the door it'll already be accounted for Actually, oh, there it is. Thought they shorted me a screw for a second. Okay, that's all screwed in all the way around. And to have an even gap going down there. And we'll see what the next step is. It might be to set the, the sweeper at the right height. And they have a little rubber sweeper that goes in there and this would probably work good if you maybe had some dawn or something but oh, it's going in there just fine It always seems to be a little bit long, so you have to trim it just a smidge. 
I guess I could maybe put it a little far and it'll help close up that gap a little. It looks like I need to take about a half inch off here. Okay, now we go inside. And this might actually be easier to do after you have the the latch on. They probably tell you to do it that way. And I'm gonna go down just snug. And then it should stay right there. And we'll pre-drill those little holes in the middle. We'll pre-drill those holes in the middle, that way it can go up and down a little bit. We can make minor adjustments. Oh, this drill bit. It's like trying to drill with a noodle. You gotta be careful not to go all the way through the door with those ones. Okay. I'll just get through that metal. Okay, so in this red kit, we have some really short screws. These things are to help hold things, but we just didn't use them. So these little screws here will hold that sweeper in place. And we won't go all the way tight for now. We'll just snug them a little bit. Okay, and the next order of business is putting on the latches. And we'll match the doorknob height. Looks like we're about maybe 37 inches and we'll make a little mark there that'll be the center that's for the closer and we'll do well, that's the striker where it latches on. And they have a template here. That helps you drill out the hole in the door. Um, let's see. This door just keeps swinging open. I don't want it 
with the slam. So there's our handles. Okay, so here's that template that I was talking about. This will go on both sides of the door and you put it on the door edge like that and fold it around. You want to make sure that's staying tight there. And we'll make a nice crease there. And I like to figure out where the handle's going in relation to those holes. Uh, we made a mark already where we want the thing to be. But I want to make sure that it's going about in the same spot. So there's that. There's that mark right there. And if we put that hole there, it'll put the button exactly in the middle there. And that'll also put the other latch at the same height. So right there, that's gonna be close enough. And we have already our 5 sixteenths drill bit. And I just like to get them started and then I'll get rid of that paper. So that's about all I need that for. Now I need to make sure I keep this nice and straight going through. Now I want to just poke through the other side. I can see it starting to dent it. Right there. So I don't deform that other side too much. That's all I do. Come on, there we go. Alternatively, you could actually keep that template on there and drill back from this side. But I have a pretty good feel for this thing, so come on. There we go. And there is a little bit of forgiveness in this thing. I believe I've used a 3 sixteenths or a 3 eighths bit before. And there's just enough coverage in there. So this thing's gonna go just like this. I wouldn't chance it, you know, you could, you drill out those holes too big and they'll start to show on the outside of your latch. Okay. A 
Where did that spring go? There should be a spring that holds the, yeah, there it is. It holds that button out. This is the plate that the latch latches onto. And you can build it out with those shims. And, whoops, those hold the latch together. And this is what turns the latch through the door. And that can go just like this. Um, it goes inside there and just like that. And now this goes through the door just like that. And it lines up with that slot inside there. Just like that. Those are the screws to hold the um, part where the latch latches onto. Hopefully that latched. Nope, it didn't. Kind of a pain. You need like a million hands to do this. Okay. Try not to cross thread it. Okay, I got it. And you can't over tighten these ones because It'll, it'll stop that latch from operating. So a couple turns, a couple little clicks after it. Seems like there's a lot of slack before that hits. I don't know why it's like that. There's usually not that much slack. Maybe I'll look at the instructions and make sure I did it right. I think I did. Okay, yeah, I have it on there right. It's just a little bit more slack before it hits than I'm used to. So now we want to mount this I want to call it a striker plate but it's not a striker plate and then I actually have some shims left over from the door that got taken off of there in case I need to build it out a little more so I want to figure out where this is contacting line this up we could go this way that's not quite the right way we want it to go this way because it gets that point further out and we want to be right right there and we'll mark the top and bottom of that thing. And I want to 
want it to be all the way in tight, which makes it hard for the closer to actually pull it in. Um, but unfortunately this thing is kind of twisted. So the framing is twisted and right now when the bottom contacts, the top has a gap. And in order to correct that, I have to force it in and the closer is not gonna be able to pull it in that hard. But I want this thing to be right there. So I'm just making a mental note of where I want it to be as far as this way. There's the top, there's the bottom, and it was catching by a decent amount, but I can pat it out with a couple of those gray shims. I'll just use the ones that they gave me. it there where I wanted it which is a little further out right about there and I'm just catching that edge of this jam I just fell down so I'm going to keep the same placement in that slot with this screw and I'm actually kind of angling a little bit this way so that I don't skip off the inside of that jam and I'm going to slide everything together and that's where I want it Got them just going snug. And this should stay closed pretty good now. Yep. I could take a shim off of there. You can see I still have a gap at the top, but the bottom is pretty tight. I could slide this down and in a little and get the door a little tighter, but I'm happy with the happy medium there. Um, the way I've done, I've seen people do this, um, in order to straighten out a door, you would take out the glass and then put some blocks of wood here in the middle and then a ratchet strap from corner to corner and you crank it tight and you kind of fold that door in and you let it sit for a while. It'll actually twist the door to close up this gap right here. And it might stay like that, it might not. Um, I'm gonna leave it be. So we have the door hung and I'm happy with the way everything is. Eventually I might take out a shim here, but I'll leave it for now. Now it's time to put on the closer and then we're done.
So we'll do this with the door closed. And we'll see where it says to mount it. Sometimes they'll tell you to go like three inches from the bottom. Sometimes they'll tell you to go three inches from the glass. I don't know if it really matters a whole lot. Uh, the better doors actually come with two closures, one for the bottom and one for the, the top. And it just gives you a little extra strength. That way, if the wind catches it, it might not blow it all the way open. Um, alternatively, you could use a chain. Some people use chains. So this thing goes on like that. This is a two-part system. So this thing gets screwed on first. And then that goes in there after. Um, oh, there we are. And this is the other side that goes against the door. This helps you hold the closer open. And we'll read the instructions now real quick like. They're saying two and a half inches from the bottom to the bottom of the thing and they have you setting it right against the hinge rail. So right there. So that's basically all I need. Um, yeah, okay. right there and then you leave this screw out here because this last one holds the gizmo together so you do these two and then put this thing in and then do the other two and they said two and a half inches I don't think this is like any exact science Ugh. Okay, I had to pause it because my feet were cramping up. Take off the nail bags. And they say to go all the way into there. I don't think we really need to. So I'm going to go right to the edge there. And again, this is something we could drill out. Usually you don't run into any problems. It could start to split this jam, but I don't think there's a huge risk of that. And we want this to be um, pretty level. We don't want it to be crooked like, like that or anything. We want it to be nice and level. I think that's looking pretty good for me. If it looks a little twisted, then it might be an illusion from the threshold. Right there, yep. scuff up the door. There we are. And 
let's see. It's going to go. This way, I think. Yeah, because this is not going to fit in there. So we can get that in there. And then the small pin goes through this one. And they used to give you a little rubber O-ring that would go on that thing there. But they don't do that anymore. We just rely on gravity. And now this goes like that. And we can pull it out a little bit. I don't know that that really does much. How much does that even get us? That's what that spacer is for though. If I can get that thing off of there. There we go. I guess it gets us a little bit. Okay. And so what I like to do is I like to give myself the option of moving this thing out if the closer ever gets tired out. So I'll put it in this hole here. That way moving it over there will give more room. And then I use these outer holes to drill into. That way it can move inside that bracket. It can go that way. And we want this to be nice and level. And I got to go grab my drill and drill those holes into there. And then that's pretty much it besides maybe a few minor adjustments. Okay, so now I want to look at this actually perfectly at an angle here because the angle of this thing is going to throw my eye off. So I want to get a good reference on where I want this to be nice and level. And then I can get up and actually put it in there. All right, so it's about a half an inch from the bottom sweeper. So right about there. Once again, they gave me a pool noodle to drill with. I appreciate the thought. That drill bit is kind of a suggestion on where the hole is supposed to be. And Usually I end up moving these out further after I get them mounted right away. Okay, that's that. Let's see if I can get this little gizmo off there. And now it's just adjusting the thing to make sure it shuts. And 
Adjusting these is a little bit tricky because when the when your door is closed inside, it creates like an airlock. When you have the glass down, when you have the glass up and down and closed, and then the door is shut inside here, it makes an airlock and it, it's really hard to get one closer to get the door to latch. Um, if you have it swinging real fast, then it starts to um, actually slam when the doors are open and the screen, when that door is open, the screens are open, this thing might slam. So right now it's not even shutting with both of them open. So the way to fix this is turn this little knob right here, turning it out and I'm pretty sure that'll make it go faster. That's too fast. So I'm going to tighten it up a bit. And it's still just as fast. Okay, so that's a little fast for me right now. But watch it'll happen when I close this door. Still a little fast. And now we're gonna make the airlock and see if it still closes. See, now it won't even close. Maybe there's a solution to this that I don't know. So if anybody has any solution, they can chime in. Um, but, you know, in my opinion, it's like you just, when you leave the house, you make sure you push the door closed, just like you would any other door. Or I can turn this thing all the way out so that it slams and it still doesn't shut. So yeah, I think that you're better off, in my opinion, having the closer so it shuts. It doesn't shut so hard when the door is, when this door is not shut because you don't want that door to slam shut. It's a little bit of a windy day today. So, there we go, that's looking a little better. Okay, I'm happy with that. So that's it guys, we got the door installed. We made a slight adjustment there at the bottom. I still need to push the sweeper down and tighten those screws up. Uh, you don't want to go super tight against the threshold because that's one more thing for the closer to try fight in order to close the door. But yeah, that's it. So if you stuck around, it's not the best professional uh, filmography here, but I think this should be helpful for, for some of you guys. So I'll catch you on the next one. Okay, I just wanted to get you guys a view from the outside after it's all done. If you hung around with me, now you get a good look at it. So this is it. We got it on there. Everything's working 
pretty well. So, and again, I might do some more minor adjustments on the door as time goes on. But pretty happy with it. So, like I said, catch you on the next one.